The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, I'm giving you a tour of my home studio, but more importantly, I'm sharing 12 home studio setup tricks that nobody tells you. I'm talking about 12 tips that will take your home studio to a professional level. So let's jump right into the sauce. Now what you're looking at here is actually my portable studio. This is where I keep the gear that I would take on the road with me if I had to go work at somebody else's studio or go set up somewhere that wasn't a studio like a hotel room and make music. Now what's just as important as having gear is being able to work with minimal gear. So when I throw this stuff in my backpack, I usually just take the laptop, the old Apollo, and the MIDI Complete Controller, and that's all I need to work just as well as I could work here at home. So tip number one, no matter how expansive or complex your home studio setup gets, never ever lose touch with your ability to work on a simple portable setup that's just a laptop, interface and MIDI controller. Now, I still have my old Yamaha speakers that you saw in my last studio tour video out here set up. I really call this setup Studio C. It's not my main room. It's not even really acoustically treated too well. It's just here so that I can practice working in a headphone studio and keep my laptop chops up while I have my bigger and more proper setup in the other room. And now tip number two, if you have an old TV laying around your house, or any TV at all, repurpose it as a second computer monitor. For most of my life, I only had one computer screen, but as soon as I got a second one, I realized that it is extremely useful. Mostly for putting your mixer window up here and having your arrangement window down here, or putting some loudness analyzer plugins up here while you work in Ableton or Pro Tools down here on your laptop. So if you have an extra TV sitting around your house, then you already have a perfectly good second computer screen for your setup. And tip number three is actually not even over here in the studio setup. It's over on the complete opposite side of the room. Boom. Tip number three, get yourself a whiteboard. Now what you can put on this whiteboard is your long-term goals, your to-do list, everything that you, anything and everything that you could possibly need to get done this week, this month, or this year, Get yourself a whiteboard, put it on the wall, and stick to it because it is an extremely powerful addition to your studio. Hi, kitty bear. So now here in Studio B, we've got a much nicer setup. The first and most important thing is that this is a laptop studio. Even though we've got a big desk here, it's all powered off of the laptop down here on the floor. And now my fourth extremely crucial home studio setup tip is if you have an air conditioning vent on the floor like this, that's where you need to be putting your laptop. Having this cold air blowing up on your computer will allow it to perform at its maximum capabilities and it'll put a lot less stress on the cooling system. Now that being said, if you don't have an air conditioning vent here on the floor like this, you can elevate your laptop with any sort of fan cooling system or even something that doesn't have fans in it. As long as your laptop is not sitting on a patch of ground that's just boiling hot from the laptop, you'll be good to go. Now the next really important thing is this room does not have a lot of wall surface to treat. In fact, it's pretty much got none. The only spot I could put a panel was up there. But that does not stop you from acoustically treating your room. So if you don't have a lot of wall space, you can treat your ceiling and your floor. In fact, this will make a huge difference that allows your room to be almost as good as recording as the ones that have acoustic treatment all over the walls. But like I said, this room is only treated on the ceiling and the floor. That's not really an issue because Kara is mostly sitting at this desk, comping and editing her Pro Tools vocal sessions in headphones. So the fact that the speakers don't sound perfect doesn't really prevent her from working at the highest possible quality. And also, if you're into computer mouses, I highly recommend these final mouses. It is just the most lightweight, incredible computer mouse you've ever touched. And then other than that, we have the Slate ML1 microphone and a second generation Apollo 8. 
This is the one that used to be in my studio tour video from last year. I've since upgraded this and you're about to see that in the next room. But before we do that, my sixth and final tip is if you're gonna get a computer monitor, make sure you get yourself a 4K display. It's gonna make a huge difference in how much screen real estate you have to work with and it's also gonna just drastically increase the sharpness and quality of everything you look at. People often ask me how I get my tutorials so clear. It's not really my tutorials that are clear, it's actually my monitor that's really clear that's being recorded by my screen recording software. So if you have the option, get yourself a 4K display. I'll put the model numbers of all the pieces of gear that you see in this video in the description so you can see exactly which monitor I'm using. It's not expensive, I just can't remember the long name that they give these Dell monitors. So let's move on to the third and final room that I call Studio A. And that's around here on the other side of the house, down the hallway. Oh, I got some of my favorite artwork here too. And a framed uh, Sony C800G. Because why not? Do your vocals sound like they got no sauce? Are you tired of listening to harsh and overcooked vocal mixes? Introducing UAD Vocal Sauce, the warmest and most powerful sauce you'll ever drop on your vocals. UAD Vocal Sauce is available now only at Holoops.com. But like I said, welcome to Studio A. Now in this room, I do all my important recording and mixing, because as you can see, it's very well acoustically treated. It's got my vocal chain set up, which hasn't changed since my last studio tour video. Still a Sony C800G. Going into the Vintec X73 preamp, which then goes up in the TubeTech CL1B, which then finishes off into the Apollo X8 interface. Now these dark gray third generation Apollos sound so much better then the second and first generation Apollos, the sound quality difference is tremendous. So if you can get yourself one of these new dark gray Apollos, whether it's the big one or the small desktop one, you will not regret it, I guarantee you. But actually, my seventh tip that I wanna to talk to you about isn't even on this desk. It's actually back here on the other side of the room, and it's this second desk that I have my laptop here on. Now what this desk is useful for is for your collaborators, co-producers, co-writers, whoever may be in here working with you to have their own workspace to set up their computer and gear on. And I guarantee you with two desks in here, you will be able to get so much more done. In addition to offering a place for some collaborators to work, this desk is also a great place to put your food and beverages that you don't want to spill on your expensive stuff. Or you can put any overflow equipment, your cables, your backpack, whatever it is that you could throw on a table, you now have an extra table back here for you to work with. And this was a really cheap addition that I got off of Amazon. It's actually one of these adjustable bedside tables that you would get to uh, eat your dinner in bed, but I use it here as a studio table, and this is one of the greatest, most professional touches I've added to this room this year. So seems ridiculous, but your second table is so crucial to your setup, especially if you work with other people. Moving on to number eight, if you have a second computer screen, absolutely use it. My favorite way to use my second display is to load up all my favorite loudness and spectrum analyzer meter plugins and let them run while I produce over here in Ableton on my main screen. And what you're looking at is Isotope Insight full screened on this second computer screen. And this second screen isn't even attached to the desk. I know it looks like a Slate Raven, but it's not. This desk is actually a Argosy Halo. And I just put this monitor here and it just sits there perfectly without being mounted at all. And it even covers up my two UAD satellites that you could see back there that run all my UAD plugins. So this desk, by Argosy is really the absolute sauce because not only does it hold your speakers, holds your second display, your primary display, and all of your equipment right here into the desk. Now, the speakers that I have are the ATC's SCM25 Pros and the Aventone Mix Cubes. These are both powered speakers. Obviously, these are my main ones and these are my secondary ones. And if you have an Apollo, you actually have a button right here to switch between your two monitors. These are the mix cubes, and then we'll switch back to the, to the ATC.
this is another reason why I really say Apollos are destroying the rest of the audio interfaces because most audio interfaces don't come with a monitor switching device built in. But I digress. Let's jump in to tip number nine, and that is running around the perimeter of the room. I have got some LED lighting, which creates the perfect vibe for when you're producing in the dark. In addition to that, these white ceiling fan lights also change colors, but you can't see them right now because the sun's up. But I cannot stress the, important of, the importance of having some cool studio lighting to create a vibe. There's nothing more boring than sitting in a black and white room trying to do something creative. So if you can put up any LED rope lights or any color changing LifeX bulbs like I have, you will be so satisfied with the vibes added to your room that I guarantee your music will be that much more vibey. Moving on, tip number 10. Another thing that's not on the desk here on the other side of the room. Oh yeah. And don't sleep on the realest audio interface in the game. Like I was saying, tip number 10, you're probably gonna be swapping out a lot of equipment in your studio and constantly be needing different cables. I used to keep all my cables in a big pile, but now I keep them in the closet on hooks. I don't have to search for anything. It's all here very simply and easy for me to grab. So make it a cable closet by putting up some really cheap hooks from your hardware store and doing some unused cable management. So now my 11th tip is something specifically for the vocalist. Coming out of my Apollo interface, you can see I got two pairs of headphones plugged in. The first pair is these Audio-Technica ATH, what is it, ATH M50X headphones. We love these headphones and we have them in every color in every room in the house. But what's really important is this second cable coming out over here that goes down on the ground and ends up here at the Furman headphone station. Now this is simply a way for two more hair pairs of headphones to be plugged into the system with their own independent volume controls. So that way you don't have to be asking the singer, is this volume good, is this volume good, or whatever, you just say, here's your headphones, here's your volume knob, do exactly what you want with it. And that is such a crucial, crucial feature in any vocal recording setup is for the singer to have their own independent control of their headphone volume. And now my 12th and final tip is actually nothing pertaining to any of the gear here, but one of the most frequently asked questions that I get from people are, Reed, what do you think about this pair of speakers? What do you think about this mic? What do you think about this preamp? What do you think about this versus this? And honestly, there is absolutely no way for me to accurately answer that question for you. The only way for you to choose gear for your home studio is for you to buy it and try it. Now that sounds really expensive because if you're considering, okay, do I want some KRKs or do I want some Yamahas? You know, it's really expensive to get both, but most vendors accept returns and give you a full refund. In addition to that, you can also do that with plugins. It seems like a lot of people are not aware that plugins give you free 30 day trials. That is the one and only way for you to accurately set up your home studio for your needs. So there you have it, my studio tour and top 12 setup tips that nobody tells you. I'm gonna put a list of every piece of gear in studio A, B, and C in a list in the description. I hope you find these 12 tips extremely useful in setting up your home studio, and I'll catch you guys next time with another tutorial. Peace out.